All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another Ankle Athletics podcast. Today, I have two special guests with me, which I think you guys are definitely going to enjoy learning about and uh, getting a little bit more insight from. Um, I have Janelle and Clarice from Sisters Who Coach. You guys want to say hi? Hey, y'all. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? How's everything going for you guys today? So, so good. Awesome. We're so excited to be a part of this. Awesome. No, I'm so excited to have you guys here. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of insight for a lot of people on a topic that I think just really a lot of people can benefit from. Um, something that I know my clients definitely can benefit from. I can benefit from um, really anyone who's, who's in the fitness industry or really, I guess, any, even any human being out there really can benefit from, from, uh, from this topic. So, and, and really your, your whole philosophy as coaching, um, as a coaching pair. So to get into things a little bit, I want everyone to learn a little bit more about you guys, um, you know, who you are, what got you into what you're doing now. So tell me a little bit more about what you guys do full time and really what your coaching is all about. Sure. So I'll just take the reins here and start it off. But Perfect. I'm actually a nurse recruiter. I used to teach special ed for seven years, took a break product of burnout, beautiful product of burnout, <laughs> um, and ended up taking a break and kind of went through a pretty deep low with which I had to just kind of dig myself out of. Um, and I can dive into that more later, but, um, eventually I got into nurse recruiting and it's been really cool to kind of just be as close to the medical field without getting queasy. Like I walk straight into a hospital and feel like I'm going to pass out. So this is the closest I can get to it by helping people and um, being a part of that as well. So, um, so kind of to dive into it a little bit when I was in that break, I um, kind of lost some of my own purpose and trying to figure out what was the next step for me, applied to several jobs and just didn't feel like I was making any or getting any traction with anything. So um, what happened during that time, I was going through a lot of deeper depression and just like anxiety of the future of just all the unknowns and just um, really hit rock bottom. So through that, I discovered some things about myself, who I was, who I what I was like and what I didn't like about myself and tried to fix a lot of that stuff by um, just divulging into a lot of um, very knowledgeable people when it comes to self-awareness and owning your own lifestyle and mental health. Um, and through that, I just pretty much built my toolkit up of how to dig myself out of all of that on my own. Um, I've been to counselors in the past and I just think they're great people, but they're glorified listeners, you know? So at the end of the day, everything you do is to help better yourself. So that's what I did. And, um, now I seek to do that for other people and try to translate a lot of those skills over to just how I help my nurses or just the people in my life and how, um, when you're all going through, when we're all going through stuff, how to just kind of, yeah, dig yourself out. So. No, I love that. That's yeah. perfect. And, and Clarice, can you tell me a little bit more about what you, what you do full time? Yeah, so I um, graduated a year ago from college at UWM and I studied kinesiology and nutrition there. And I dabbled into a little bit of bodybuilding um, while I was in school. And I think that's really where my passion grew for health and wellness in general, um, just because I got to learn like the ins and outs of the body. Um, so right now I actually work for a company called Noom, um, and I love their philosophy, philosophy behind everything that they do. Cause it's all about, um, a healthy behavior changes and finding moderation in life rather than, um, partaking in those crazy diets. So I basically am a goal specialist for them and I do that full time. And then on the side, I do some in-person training as well as some online nutritional coaching for triathletes actually all around the nation. And oh, wow. I love what I do actually. And I'm so thankful to be able to say that, but bodybuilding, I would say really, um, instilled some challenges that I didn't think that I would have to face as a 2021 year old. And I think that's where my interest grew on just the importance of what mental, your mental state kind of plays on everything that we do in the gym or out of the gym or every aspect of that. So, um, yeah, I uh, am a coach for Noom and I do training on the side and lots of online stuff. Um, but my passion really is rooted in just finding balance and helping people find that balance in a life 
of health and wellness. And I really do find joy in what I do and impacting others with that um, goal set. No, I, I think that's perfect. And you said, you said a goal specialist, is that the title? Yeah. So that's my title. So I really that's just cool. communicate with people daily and I help yeah. them set obtainable goals. I'm sure you've heard of like smart goals where they're yeah. specific and measurable. Um, I take my days kind of just conversing with hundreds of users and help them set goals that help them reach their overall goal. Oh, that's super cool. So is that like a, is that like a brick and mortar facility then as well? Yeah, so they're, um, they're all through an app. So people basically download oh. this app and it's like an online business and it's virtual so I can work at home in bed with a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the, the life. I seriously wake up every day completely blessed and shook that I get to do this for a living. So That is awesome. No, that is super cool. And, and I think people can kind of already see where this kind of segues into if they know a little bit about you guys heading into the podcast. Um, you know, yeah. about Sisters Who Coach and what uh, kind of that developed into for both of you guys. So tell me a little bit more, whoever wants to take the reins here, um, as far as what got you into working together, developing Sisters Who Coach, you know, how did you come up with that name? I guess I could probably come up with maybe some reasons where you got that name. <laughs> but, uh, tell me a little bit more about uh, what, what brought you guys together and, and what really got you guys, you know, brainstorming to, to bring this idea to, to life. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, Joe, margaritas bring all good things to life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I yeah. would agree. So Especially we were, good ones. What was that? Sorry. Especially good margaritas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> salt on the rim. So anyways. I was just going to say salt or no salt. That's key. Yeah, there. Salt on the rocks. <laughs> the only. Yeah, I feel you. I feel, I feel you. I mean, unless it's like a blended strawberry, then I mean, okay. <laughs> exceptions, exceptions. Right. <laughs> but not in Wisconsin during the winter. So. True, true but, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brain okay, free. so pretty much we were driving in the car, and obviously we're sisters, so that's the sisters aspect. Um, I'm the oldest. She's the youngest girl in our family. We've always had a, like a really special bond, able to connect over a lot of things. Um, but we, were, we were driving, and I mentioned to her how – um, like I've just dove into mental health and how much I love it. It's my passion getting to know that area more, but trying to figure out the next step for me, should I go back to school or should I not? And what does that look like if I go back to school? Cause the better degrees for psychology are the ones that include the physical health and the mental health and the light bulb kind of went off and we looked at each other and um, this was prior to margaritas, by the way, just to just surprise. <laughs> In the then, car, yeah, good. Yeah. Got to clarify for the listeners. Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then we looked at each other and just kind of dawned on us. And she's like, I'll do the physical health component. And it just kind of made sense, you know, that the partnership is just going to really blossom from here because we are so rehearsed and so educated in both of those aspects that it just made sense. So um, then the margaritas came in and the rest is history kind of thing. So <laughs> like our main focus is we want to build the bond because the mind and the body are so intricately connected and you can't have one without the other. And um, a lot of um, just to add and reiterate yeah. that, just a lot of professions, if you think about health or wellness, whether that be a psychologist or a doctor or um, a physical therapist or a personal trainer or a dietitian, they really hone in on either one or the other. And that's what I think is so unique and so cool about us is just we get to build that awareness and connect the two and get to share how they interact with each other and impact each other in such a large way rather than viewing one and then viewing the other we get to see how they um really just play a such a large role on yeah. each part yeah like ie you know if you're experiencing a lot of stress on the body and the mind whatever you got a lot going on in your mind um, that's definitely going to impact your eating, your physical activity. It's just going to really impact a lot of different aspects of your life. So the whole idea meant with mental health is changing your mindset to create those. And I, it's a weird word, but create the vibrations throughout your body that are healthy. And so you're not having to um, basically have such a negative outlook or fear or just that external impact 
like you're basically allowing that external external impact to have effect on your body. Totally. Um, and then Clarice can kind of share like the physical stress that kind of happens too along those lines. Yeah, just with like how many times you hear someone that has a problem with stress eating or the type of foods that they um, will choose to eat or not eat at all when they're stressed. And I think a lot of people just adhere to whatever um, they desire for their life, whether that is a health goal or a fitness goal or um, a life goal in general. I think people really adhere to those plans and desires better when they know the why behind it. Mm -hmm. So us taking the time to just kind of build that awareness behind all of that just really allows, um, I think, just to build that awareness and build that bond just I think makes a cool impact on um, people and being able to create goals in a different way. Totally. No, I, I completely agree with that. And I think there's, there's so much power behind that where it's like, if you can really educate someone, you know, like, here's why you're doing it. Like you said, I've always been the same way. That's why I hated math. Cause I'd be like, Hey, why are these, why are we using these equations? <laughs> and they're like, just because that's the one, that's what we can help with. Like, that's not, that's not a constructive answer that I like, you know, I want to know exactly why, because then, you're you're more bought in I totally I totally agree and I think I think that's 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 super key Um, like it's just the whole concept over like knowledge is power so like if you have the knowledge of why you do what you do like why are you binge eating or why are you not eating you know that was my case in college you know like I let that area slip for me so like if I understand those triggers and understand kind of my childhood wounds or the mindset that I'm having of just control over my day, you know, to change that, it's going to have a totally different impact on your body to create that overall health health at the end of the day. No, I I totally agree. And I think there's, there's so much to be said about that just simply because like you, like you, like you said, we, we, we're kind of on autopilot and that's where like those binges happen or, you know, it's just comfort or whatever that is. But I think, you know, being aware of that and saying like, Hey, you know, like if you are eating better, it's not only going to help you with our goals physically, but you're probably going to feel better mentally as well without you really even, you know, doing much of, you know, going to a therapist or like you said, a counselor or something like that, just at the ground level, you know, being able to change it right now. I think that's, that's huge. And I think you guys kind of already talked about it a little bit, but what is that main focus for you guys or kind of those specifics as a business um, with kind of your philosophy behind things? I know obviously mental and physical health correlation is a huge component to that, but what are some of those core values within your business that really are like, Hey, this is, this is who we are. Yeah. I think that is um, just building the bond through awareness. And we kind of touched on that a little bit, but I think the more awareness that you build between um, creating that bond between the two will really change people's outlook on whatever it may be for them. Um, And Janelle may be able to add to that a little bit more, but I think that really is all that we're kind of encompassed in is just really building awareness in order to build the, by building the bond in between. um, To be honest, Joe, it's such a multifaceted question because even right now, like my mind is going like a mile a minute, like how technology has advanced and we can see different brain patterns compared to what we saw 10 years ago and what affected the brain and how mindsets actually can change the physical DNA makeup of your brain. Like that, that is all very pertinent information to like, really be able to be a successful human being and to be able to go about because life sucks let's be honest like life is not a bowl of cherries and ice cream like it's just not and so to really come one up all the stress we encounter I mean just to kind of maybe dumb it down a little bit with how it's yes there are so many different aspects but but our focus is typically just like how what is stress how does it relate to the mind and the body and how can we react onto it in a healthy way? And some of these bigger things are your brain actually doesn't, you know, sorry, your brain does not, is not able to tell the difference between encountering a stressful timeline and meeting that deadline at work and encountering a bear in the middle of the woods, which yep. is crazy. And yeah. so, like if we are able to know, like your brain can identify the difference, how much ownership can that bring to an individual to take control of that situation and say, I'm not going to be affected by this, but I'm not just going to sweep this under the rug. I'm going to replace it with, with X, Y, Z behaviors. Because like, 
like what I alluded to in the beginning of our conversation, I had to build up my toolkit with a bunch of tools. I don't need all, I don't need the screwdriver, the hammer, the whatever other tools. <laughs> I don't know all the tools. Of the toolkit. I don't need them all. The jackhammer. Yeah. I don't need them all for every situation. I only need one or two. So it's knowing what I have access to and when to access those items. Um, it, it's per pertinent. So we, our primary focus is how can we share these tools, physical and mental tools to help people build their own awareness, their own ownership and build that bond between mind and body. So it's kind of hard to answer that question, honestly, Joe, because yeah. everyone's so different, you know? So it's totally. like, it's really case by case and how we're all wired so uniquely different from one another. Yeah. Totally. Even to add on that, just like with dealing with um, different users or clients or people that come my way. Um, it's just so important to take a case by case. Cause I'm sure, you know, of so many people that send out cookie cutter plans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where I really pride myself in getting to know the people that I like am working with. I want to mm -hmm. have, a relationship with you in a way that I know the why behind why, why behind the what the why are you responding this way yeah. and it could go super deep into the fact of one of my clients was um, not loved by her father in a proper way so yeah. she's constantly seeking that verbal or physical affirmation and so she's constantly thinking she's not good enough and that's results in an eating disorder or that results in something else because she's constantly seeking these external affirmations. Um, and if I don't know that about so-and-so mm -hmm. client, it's so hard to, um, I'm not able to relate with them in the way that they need. So mm -hmm. knowing and getting to know my clients yeah. in such a much deeper way can really help it bridges that bond between the mental and physical mm -hmm. health in such a great way for me as a coach to be able to relate with that client, but then also take it one step further and meet them where they're at and be able to relate with them and um, properly help them and make sure I give them all the tools that they need in order to succeed in whatever they're searching for. To piggyback off that too, everyone's on a journey. So if people aren't ready to connect and go to that deeper level of vulnerability to say, here's my dirty laundry, case in point, that girl that you were yeah. coaching, like in that instance, if people are not ready to hit that vulnerability level and invite people into their mess and the why behind the what, it's uncomfortable. But I mean, in the same breath, they have to take that ownership over their life. And if they're ready to do it, it's exciting because we get to kind of create their growth path for them. But if they're not ready, that's something that we as humans and as coaches need to be patient with because that's their journey, you know, and we all, I mean, how many times do we go about our lives and maybe it makes sense for one human being at a certain point and it does for somebody else at, a, at another time. It's like, we just have to be considerate of people's lives. Like they're human, they're humans. And we just have to be patient with that process for them because when it's going to come, then, then we're all in, we'll help them through it. But, um, that's their decision, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I I think that's, I think that's honestly huge. And I think what you said in, in the fact that, because this is how I, when I started to get into coaching and when I was personal training in person, and I would have those clients who did feel comfortable enough to tell me those things, you know, they're talking about, you know, divorces or their family problems and these things that are really heavy, really. And you kind of, obviously it affects you as a trainer. I used to think at the beginning when I was younger, I'm like, oh, like, why are they telling me all this? And then now I realize I'm like, it's because they feel comfortable enough to open up with you, you know, about those things, which I think is so profound. Like you said, it's, it's paramount in their success because a lot of the time, the reason why they're, you know, overweight or unhappy with themselves is because of that very problem that they're probably telling you about. And it's right. like, it's just in incredible to, to have that ability. And I think what you what you're mentioning as far as like people being, being willing to open up like that, I think that's definitely the case. Um, and, you know, you have those clients maybe who, you know, maybe they're struggling pr progress wise, but, you know, it's something underlying. I mm -hmm. think, unfortunately, there's so many coaches out there where they don't make it known or that maybe they don't even want to because they're not compassionate enough to allow them, you know, their clients to talk about that. And it's like, you know, there's obviously a fine line, but I think 
like we're talking about here, you know, the correlation of mental and physical health is so key. So it's like, you know, oh, sorry, I don't want to hear about your problems. Well, <laughs> it's probably going to be directly correlated to their ability to get over that hump and break through. So I think that's, that's huge. And I, I've had a, a ton of clients um, in the LGBTQ community. And that is something that really opened up a lot to me because I've a few family members who are in that community as well. And, and really, I've, I've been aware of it. But learning some insight from the perspective of people that, you know, live a totally different life and have totally different problems than I do, it really has, has opened things up. And I think it's probably something that you guys through your experience working with people, is that something that has helped you with your own journeys as well? Because that definitely has helped me. Yeah, and I think that's, um, to kind of go off all of what you're saying, because we agree, but it's, <laughs> um, when you're able to take that almost like humble spot as a coach and really just sit and actively listen to what your client's saying, um, that puts your clients or people or it doesn't even have to be someone that's paying you or whatever yeah. um it can even be friendships and relationships but it puts you in a place to empower them and at the end mm -hmm. of the day if someone feels empowered they're more likely to take action so if they're coming to you in a place and they feel able to be vulnerable in that spot um they're going to be more likely to recognize the why behind what they're doing. So if that's a weight loss goal, they may have came to you saying, I want to lose 100 pounds and it's because I want to feel good and confident. When in reality, it's because their husband said they weren't good enough, you know? Yep. And getting to that why behind everything allows you to imp them in such a cool way and mm -hmm. allows you to have them do something for themselves and just be more aware of um, the why behind everything. Well, yeah, because essentially you're just building that trust with that human, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, we're all built for connection. And if we're not seeking connection in one place, we'll find somewhere else. So, I mean, because we're hardwired in that way, I think it's yeah. valuable to give people, I think the greatest gift you can give to people is time. And to know that, you know, we're not on a tight time frame. This isn't about us. It's about the person that's in front of us. It's not about you, you know? And so to give give that time and give that encouragement, give that motivation. They may not, they may have nobody else in their life to just totally. Listen. And so it's valuable. I count that as a win when I have people that sit yeah. in front of me and share their story with me. And I, I count it a privilege. It's not a right, you know, that people are sharing those things with me. So I want to hold their stories with delicacy and be able to you know, only provide wisdom or support if they need it. They'll tell me. I've had people like when I sit quietly across the table from them, they go in circles and finally they're like, what do you think? And that's a point where I try, I sometimes I insert myself before that point, but I really try to be more active listener in that way and wait for them to ask my opinion because then they're giving me that freedom to say, okay, let's do something about this you know, what does this look like? Or kind of guide or facilitate the conversation into a way where they feel heard and loved and they're taking ownership over it. And I'm not just telling them what to do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just questioning them to get them to think through stuff and process, go through those uncomfortable moment, moments to be able to own, own their moment. Yeah, I, I think, I uh, sorry, I think- No, you're good the whole fitness and health and wellness field can get so, so prescriptive. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what is so cool about listening and really being a good coach is you can just sit there and listen and people will feel much more empowered when they come up with the ideas on their own. Correct. When they're more self-aware and coming up with those ideas on their own, they're more likely to take action in their own and life. Stick to it. Yeah, and adhere to it better because it's not just like, hey, I know this is good for you. This is my opinion or so-and-so's opinion, and I know it's going to benefit you, so yeah. you should do this because I've heard it works or I know it works. Right. And it's like, no, like take a second to just listen. Like if they're saying one thing, go off of that and ask them questions more about that. And they're going to leave that conversation feeling empowered because you ask them questions on things that they actually want to change and right. things that they're actually want to take action, but not only want to, but are ready to. Because some mm -hmm. people get in that like, 
oh, I want to do this, or I hope to do this one day, but it's like, I'll do it leave, tomorrow. Yeah, they'll leave those conversations empowered and ready to take action because mm-hmm. it's their idea and something that they're coming up with on their own. No, I, I think that's, that's super valuable because I think, like you said, there's going to be a point in which if you aren't giving them the tools to understand and not motivate them, but, but kind of light that fire w- within themselves and, and that desire, um, because I think like you, like you're saying, if you are the one, you know, like, all right, come on, you know, like, Hey, let's go, let's go. If you're always the one nudging them along. Eventually they are, you know, they're going to fall off. It's, you know, cause they haven't established that, that deep desire within themselves for what they want. Um, and they might not even know that's what they want. Like you said, where they're like, Hey, I just want to lose a hundred pounds. And they might not really have, you know, sat down and had that painful thought session with themselves or conversation with, with you, um, and, and say, Hey, this is actually what the root cause of this problem is and probably why I ended up where I am. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's really, really huge because I think like we are, like I said, we're always on autopilot every, all humans right. in this in age. And it's like, I've had clients literally say, or just people in general, where you sit down and you talk with them or like potential clients where I talk with them on the phone and they're just like, wait, like, like I, I appreciate you like sitting here and like listening to me, you know, it's like an hour conversation goes by and they're like, this is like something that I don't really have happen very often, you know? And it's like, totally like I can relate. I definitely understand, you know? So it's, it's, it's interesting. And like you said, prescriptive, that's so, so true. Or it's like, you know, you just got to do this. And it's like, okay, well, I have all these circumstances that are my own life, you know, and I need to adapt that. Well, here, you know, it's just so brushed away rather than, oh, okay, what's actually going on in your life? You know, how can we adapt this accordingly? Um, it's, it's definitely interesting. Joe, you know what's kind of crazy? What? If you think, like, currently, there's how to lose pounds within two weeks. Everything's at our fingertips. How to eat better, how to cope with this, how to focus on dealing with the stress in this way. You know, I can literally go to Google and get an answer. What that's leaving me is no margin to think for myself and develop my own thoughts around something and what works for me. So just to piggyback off of what you're saying, like all this get rich quick type mental health mentality or physical health mentality is just not physical health mentality. (laughs) But like, (laughs) it's not, it's not helpful to us because people are trying to, again, box themselves in for strategies that have helped other people, but they don't, they're not even thinking, we're not thinking for ourselves, you know? And so I actually read somewhere one time that was like super helpful for me to just pause before researching on Google, before talking to a friend, before yada, 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 and you fill in the blank, to just pause for like 10, 15 minutes and kind of just marinate in that thought of just where you want to be and what you want to, where you want to go and what's worked in the past, what could work for you, what do you want to try? Like those kind of things are all valuable to your own growth, but how many times... Like in a busy world of constant hurrying, how many times have, do we actually sit in these awkward moments of trying to figure that out for yourself? Yeah, no, you don't sit. <laughs> I think no. we don't ever stop. We're always right. moving. Like even at like the gym, I always think about that. I'm on my phone, you know, I'm looking at listening to music, I'm filming myself, you know, like it's wild. I've actually started to do yoga. Uh, I, I committed a one time per week and it's changed. It's changed. It's changed. <laughs> I know I actually saw that you should come with me sometime to uh I, I I do social media marketing for this place called Vibe Health and Fitness it's a cool little studio um they're awesome I would love to to go with you but yeah I literally that's the only time like I've I go in there for an hour and I'm like wow this is probably the only time as sad as it is to say that I'm not on my phone or by my phone you know throughout the day and it's like oh my gosh that makes me sad to think like I said but yeah it's the reality you know and some people don't even get that hour to themselves, like, like you're mentioning. So I yeah. think that's, that's wild. Yeah. That mindfulness is just so important on like every aspect. Like if you want to tie it into the mind or the body, the mindfulness of everything that's happening to you and the actions that you're taking, for example, even eating in front of a TV, you're going to leave unsatisfied always because mm-hmm. you know, you're so preoccupied. So it's so important to take that time to 
not only be mindful, but just to have those like self-care outlets Mm -hmm. um, and take care of yourself in the midst of the busy chaos world that we live in. For no, for sure. And I think what you were mentioning also with like that quick fix sort of mindset as well, like, oh, let me just go Google it and I'll figure out how I can, you know, lose that that uh that 10 pounds or whatever it's like everyone has that like almost like six minute ab sort of mindset to life and it's like there's no like there's no like permanence to that you know what I mean it's like so they want it now and I think that's that's also a big thing too where establishing that um the the desires of like what is actually what is actually like what are the variables you really should be focusing on to see if you are progressing in the right direction right instead of like um, I think there's like a psychology term. It's like uh, Goodhart's law talking about like if a measure um, becomes a target, like if that's the only focus you have, it's not like a good measurement anymore. So I think of the weigh-ins, like that's such a great analogy for the weigh-ins. People are like so focused and hyper-focused on weigh-ins that they do all these unhealthy things and put themselves in an unhealthy mental state to just see the number go down. And it's like, ah, like just makes it so, so kind of like, again, so needed to to make yourself aware of like, Hey, like, this is actually what that's going to do to you. You know, here are the drawbacks, like, you know, behavior wise, you know, your relationship with food and like all these things. It's like, all right. You know, like you said, just stop and think a little bit, think about a year from now, like what happens if you stuck, if you stuck with this, would this be, you know, something you could do long-term? I think, like you said, if you just stopped and thought and, you know, kind of even just wrote down your thoughts on a, on a piece of paper and, or talk to someone, it can, change the game about what you're actually putting your effort into and your willpower. Right. Well, I do feel we are in a society of perfection. Everything's the standard of perfection. So everything we do is like, we are going to lose those 10 pounds, but we're not even, and instant gratification. So it's like to achieve that level of perfection overnight, it's like what we need to be focusing on and changing our mindset on is why don't we get the instant or like the gratification out of building those habits? So like mm-hmm. the process, gym, I went to the gym today. That should be gratifying for you. And that should be exciting because you actually step. Yeah. completed your goal for the day. You know, like, because what you're ultimately doing is you're building, building those habits of weekly goals of, I'm going to go to the gym three times. That's realistic for my lifestyle. I'm going to go to the gym three times. That's building a healthy habit. Yay for me. You know, instead of just looking at this goal of, that could be daunting, you know, maybe bring it down a little bit and make them more obtainable and get excited when you meet those weekly goals, daily goals, and not just look at the annual goal of I went to the gym every day. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, it can be overwhelming too, if you're just looking at that long-term goal, you know what I mean? You're like, holy crap, well, I have a hundred pounds. This is going to take forever, you know, versus like, like you said, here's kind of an incremental small daily goal that really is going to kind of check the boxes daily. That's going to add up and really snowball into that positive effect. And I think that's, that's huge. I actually started doing that with my clients because I'm like, you know, what are those main focuses? Like what are the main things they need to be hitting every day? And so actually we have this cool little like thing that we do and not all my clients use it, the the ones who do, they, they really enjoy it and they love it. Um, but I have them post basically a little checklist in our Facebook community every night. Um, and that is kind of their like little check-in and I do like a little giveaway every like twice a month for like the people who have the most check-ins. And I say, you know, it's not about being perfect. You don't have to check all the boxes, but if you're in the group posting, like you're keeping yourself accountable, you know, you're around like-minded people. And that was like a huge game changer for me where I was reading more about, you know, those incremental daily, you know, little habits that really ultimately add up our life, you know, really (laughs) that are like, that is their day to day. So that has, like, like you said, it's, I, I think we have very similar styles with those small little habits or what add up, you know, because otherwise you're just overwhelmed with that big daunting goal. You know, I totally yeah. can relate. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like, I don't know if you can relate to this too, but I feel like it comes down to the type of questions that you ask in order to set those goals too, you know, cause, cause if you give people ideas, they're obviously going to be like, Oh yeah, that's probably a good idea. You know, where it's like, oh, I should probably drink more water. I should probably do this, you know, but it's like, but how does that fit into why you want to like reach this overarching goal? You know, like, why is that so important to you now? And like, why do you want to prioritize that now this week or this month or this upcoming year, you know? And I think being intentional and that ties back into active listening and really getting to know those um, people that you come in contact with can really 
play such a large role in not only goal setting, but life in general to just be more intentional with people in such a healthy and good way that um, they're able to take action and feel empowered because they're setting um, themselves up for success in such a bigger way than just like health and wellness. No, for sure. And I, I think it's, it's so interesting too, with our society, with social media, with that sort of thing, where so many times, I know my, my clients included friends, family, me, <laughs> like comparing, like, and, and always like being like, oh, well, you know, this person, and, this, and it's like, it's so easy to, to have that happen. I know myself, it, not everyone has this as an example. And some of my clients have definitely come to me um, at this point, or people I know, especially in the bodybuilding community working out too much almost to the point where they're like you know they're doing it because they feel like they need to or you know there's some sort of you know underlying again childhood reason or you know a uh, past relationship or something and I've definitely gotten like almost unhealthy states that way with the exercise as well or you know with food and like I think you're mentioning Janelle like not eating you know or starving yourself and obviously that gets into you know, the, the eating disorder side of things, which I wrestled, I definitely had my fair share of eating disorder problems, which I didn't even know was a thing back when I was so young, just cutting weight and that sort of thing. But I think, yeah, I, I think especially with social media, that has probably been one of the, it's a, it's a blessing, of course, but I think it's definitely also a curse at the same time, especially for people who are already, you know, more predisposed to, to maybe comparing themselves or thinking, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. Or, you know, they see someone's you know, perfect example of, hey, this is her in the gym every day. She looks great. You know, I want to look like that. And it's like, well, that's just one photo. You know, I think that's, that's huge too. And I think that goes back to being aware of like, hey, that's just a snap it or a snippet, you know, of her, of her life or his life, you know? So I think, I don't know, I think that's very interesting. That's something I have definitely tried to be more aware of, like even like, you know, posting less shirtless selfies, you know, and being less like boastful about it. But it's like, I don't know, it's such a fine line. I've always been like in a dichotomy about that of like, you know, okay, well, I want to, you know, promote and, and, you know, get my name out there. But it's like, well, do you, is that how you want to, you know, present yourself? You know, it's, it's a very Joe. interesting thing. Yeah, Joe, I feel like you need to start a new Instagram account. That's like hashtag real life. <laughs> right. Yes. Like shirtless selfies after you eat pizza. <laughs> That's yes amazing. with my stomach rolls hanging <laughs> chilling while i'm chilling like no matter people are like oh you don't have you, know, you you have abs all the time like are you kidding me no i can i can do the whole uh, i can push my stomach out so it looks like i'm like <laughs> six months pregnant so right. no definitely not but no i, I agree there will be some people that are envious of that <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun i will admit it's a little yes. fun thing to pull out you know if you're trying to trying to press some uh press some ladies they do like the stomach pushing out <laughs> right, right right i know I, you guys are already uh flattered by my ability right. to do oh, that right. <laughs> the, the vacuum too that's where people really are like what like especially people who aren't into fitness they're like what are you why are you sucking in your you stomach like that joe <laughs> <laughs> you know, so funny. you can't see but you're now sitting over here literally thinking in her head what is a vacuum i am like what the <laughs> exactly hell is talking I, i'm just gonna send her i'm just gonna send you guys a pic after this and she'll be like yeah it totally makes sense now it totally yeah. makes sense yeah yeah you guys <laughs> I mean, that's what I'll, be doing. I'll, I'll still be doing my food baby pictures online but yes it's like the opposite let's put it that way it's the opposite of a food baby oh yeah it's a regressed food baby basically yeah. oh coming so. back to gotcha. um social media we to, or, agree yeah. that li literally plays such like a huge role on people's health in general I just feel like yeah, a yeah. Of comparison because you have that at your fingertips yeah. where it's like you know, with bodybuilding, like you're constantly comparing to the people at the O or whatever it may be, where it's like, yeah. that's their like year 15 of bodybuilding. And you've been in bodybuilding like three years and are already on gear, right. you know, where yep. it's like, you can't yep. compare yourself, whether that's their mental health, the being um, so self-aware and have such a high es esteem or whatever it may be. Um, you can't compare yourself and your day 50 to someone's like day 485. You yeah. Know? Like I'm definitely single and I see people post pictures of flowers on Instagram and it's like from my boyfriend. Oh, he's such <laughs> a good relate. guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, it's like, 
why don't you post the real reason of why you got the flowers? Because mm -hmm. you screwed up last night and you got yep. a huge argument. So then <laughs> you got you flowers. Like that's real talk, you know? Yeah, and it's like, it's, it's a person. You know? There's a me there's a meme that was like it said something like uh it was like if you post everything about your relationship on Facebook or Instagram, it's like we all deserve to know what happens after you guys break <laughs> up. <laughs> like you gotta tell us the whole story. Yes. Like, oh, yes. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I'm definitely a culprit, but hey, you know, yes. that's the truth. Yes. It is definitely the truth. A little bit like yeah, exactly. I think pe people would see like a reality like Instagram and they would be shocked. They'd be like, Wait, is this are we like not supposed to see this? Yeah. yeah. And it's sad that we've gotten to this point that, you know, like, I think I read the other day that somebody, like, we all check our phone at, on average, like 2,500 times a day. Oh like, my gosh. That's insane. I believe it though, actually. Yeah. Unfortunately. Like, sometimes when I delete apps, I find myself going to that app and it's not even on my phone, like multiple times a day. Wow. So it's like crazy how that dopamine, I'm getting that dopamine fix every time I go to these apps. And for what? Maybe a like? For what? Yep. Like, they're not, grat they're not satisfying at the end of the day. And it's like, why am I investing so much of my time and energy into other people's worlds that aren't even real? Yes. Be investing that time into bettering myself whether it's a social skill or a mentality, by the way, plug, we can fix our mindsets and change them. We didn't know we could 10 years ago, which is exciting. Like we can change our mental patterns now. So you can actually change behavioral patterns where I didn't think we could a while ago, which is crazy, you know, but like physical patterns, like we change all of this. We have the power to do that. But are we even taking the time to invest in ourselves to learn how to do that? Or are we just investing in other people who we don't even know on social media? True. That is, that is so true. And, and like putting all of that willpower and energy into that too. I think that's like yeah. such a negative thing. I think whether you like them or not, but Gary Vee, I think said something about like all that time you're spending scrolling through Instagram, you know, worrying about, Oh, I wish I was doing that. It's like, you could literally be spending time, you know, doing whatever you want to do, you know, and moving towards wow. what you are trying to do. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's key, like whether it's people, like you said, with um, within like, you know, physique sports and that sort of thing that you're comparing to, because obviously that's, that's another topic for another day, but kind of you <laughs> know, literally like having people realize that it's like, you're entering literally one of the most, if not the most subjective sport known to man. So it's like, understand that that, that is what you're entering into, you know, you kind of, you're, you're getting yourself into that because that's right. subjective, you know, but I think it's, it's just very interesting because like, like you said, you know, it's one step away from, you know, going and looking at your ex's, you know, profile and seeing what they're up to. And it's like, oh, they must be really happy, you know, and then all of a sudden, yeah, you're in a sad state and, you know, you're feeling like crap and your days, you know, downhill and then boom, segueing right into nutrition, you know, you're, you, you go and grab the quick convenient option and, you know, you, that feels good. And it's like this vicious, vicious cycle, which you can see, you know, that, that it can happen so easily, especially in this, this world we live in. So I think, yeah. it's definitely what you guys are doing I think is literally amazing and it's something that not a lot of people are doing or focusing on even in the fitness industry which is so sad because you think you know most people who know that it has such a correlation if you've been in the fitness industry for a long time you know I just wish more coaches did you know and, and like just spoke about this really you know even talked about their own journeys you know with depression or anxiety or you know, like me, like where I'm like, yeah, I've seen a therapist pretty much my whole life. Like ever since I was in middle school, you know, it's like, I, I have no shame with that. I'd rather explain that and tell people that because it's like, Hey, you can go do it too. And it helped me a lot, you know? So I think, I think that's crazy. Yeah. yeah I think me. that's so cool and very admirable about you, but, um, that you're able to just be vulnerable. Cause I think people really do appreciate that. And I know speaking for myself, I really do look up to those um when I was in bodybuilding I would really look up to those girls who would share like those really vulnerable posts mm -hmm. where we're dealing with whatever it may be um or other coaches that are dealing with physical health issues due to their mental health or whatever mm -hmm. happened um with them I think that plays like such a large role on I think it just impacts a lot of people when people are vulnerable and they take that step to kind of share um more about kind of what's going on with them versus just being so forward about what they are. 
if that makes sense. I mean, we do have the chatty Cathy's in the world that will kind of emotionally dump no matter what. And totally. some people are attention seekers. So, you know, you're going to get a lot of Miss. people dumping yeah. on things and being, it seems to be vulnerable, you know, but then you have those that do have that genuine heart of wanting and craving vulnerability with others. And vulnerability is to be only provided in a safe place. And I'm, I've actually, my heart has been mishandled by when I've been vulnerable with people that I've trusted and it backfired, you know? Yeah. So, At last, not, that, that's a lasting effect on you for sure. That's yeah. a lot of, for you to work through, I'm sure. Oh, totally. Goodness. And this is, you know, these are because we're all human, right? And I'm not sitting mm -hmm. here faulting those people. It's just it's the I'm, reality. I have control over that. And I have control who I am being transparent with or not. So to really remember to create my own safe vulnerability with people. And that's why I try to do that for others to create that space because I can't expect them to be vulnerable if I'm not vulnerable. So if mm -hmm. I can maybe give a little bit for them to kind of feel like they can trust me, I'm going to absolutely do that because back to the whole connection thought, like we all crave that. And mm -hmm. if we, Clarice and I started this whole thing literally with a thought in our mind, if we can help one person, everything we are doing is of worth. You know, but if it, we're not, we're not setting ourselves out to help thousands, we're just trying to create that awareness so that these people can take it. Joe can take it. Sally can take, you know, whoever mm -hmm. can take this little insight that we can provide and share it with the people around them. We're essentially duplicating ourselves at that point, And that's what we want because we can't help thousands of people. We can only help the people in front of us. So that was our goal from the beginning. And we continue to carry that with what, us with what we do. So. No, I think that's huge. And I think, like you said about you opening up, I'm sure you guys have felt it where, you know, someone signs up or, you know, a friend of yours or like they're, you know, you're having a conversation about things. And sometimes they might even think, especially with like a coach that, you know, you're, you you want to be the authority, that sort of thing, of course, but they sometimes think that you don't have maybe those problems as, as much as the next person. And it's yeah. like, no, 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 I'm just as human as you, you know, I'm just the same, you know, same old human. I got stresses, I got, you know, relationship problems, family troubles, you know, it's like, I think, like you said, it, it makes them aware of that for one, where they're like, oh, wow, he's just a human too. Like, you know, and then also I'm going to feel more comfortable to, to be able to express what I'm feeling or whatever I'm going with, even if there's nothing going on at that time. I know that's, that's something I always say to my clients where I'm like, if there is something down the road, you know, feel free to be open with me about it because chances are, yeah, I'm going to help. I'm, 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 I want to help. I don't want to be left in the dark. Um, right. I, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. I've had clients maybe where they don't, um, you know, or even like really family or, you know, people like that, especially if I'm trying to help them out with certain things and I'll like hit them up, you know, Hey, how's it going? And they're kind of ghosting me, ghosting me. And, um, eventually I'll just say, you know, Hey, like uh, if there's anything going on, you know, because they sometimes feel like they're, they're being graded almost where it's like, Oh, you know, if I talk to Joe, he's going to be mad that I'm not doing what I need to do. Mm -hmm. But an underlying reason sometimes is the cause. And it's like, Hey, just be being willing to say, Hey, like if there's anything going on, feel free to let me know. You know, I don't want to feel like you're, you know, that's you're awesome. not doing right. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think that's huge. That That's, because because I used to think of it like oh they're ghosting me like damn them you know what's wrong with them why can't they answer? you know what I mean like it's like yeah. it's like no a lot of times it's probably you know it's not you Joe it's the problem it's probably just whatever they have going on or you know like I said they feel like they're they're being graded and it's like no everyone's at their own progression point don't don't yeah. stress that you know that's awesome that you do that because honestly so many people like I know I'm guilty of just projecting my own hurt and pain and experiences on other people oh yeah they may not even know that they're doing that until you're like hey is it me or is this you know like yeah just, literally kind of clear the air you know that's awesome that you create that safety for them for them to just be like yeah, I don't have money this month or you know yeah no literally exactly I'll let her just tell me yeah, like exactly you know, we all want to just like get on everyone's good side. So, I mean, I mean, not everyone, some people don't give a crap. So <laughs> Some people don't deserve it. Right. Right. right, right. But anyways, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. You do that though. Yeah. I feel like that kind of bridges the gap with your clients. I, I try to, I strive to do that with people that I come to into contact with is just putting that out there right away that, Hey, this is like, 
sounds very planet fitnessy, but this is a <laughs> zone, you know, where it's yeah. like, I want to know things going on with your life because they impact you and they're impacting you. And I want to be able to help support you in the best way that I can. Um, and that affects, if that affects their mental or physical health or both, that's going to kind of degrade or limit their progress that they're going to see, you know? So I try and open that door right off the bat, like, Hey, please text me or please email me or, um, you have my number. Like if you need something, please call, please text. Like I'm here for you. And I just kind of open up that door so that when that like weird moment can happen where it's like, Hey, you owe money or whatever else it may be. It's like, they already know they can be, um, straight up with me, Mm -hmm. you know? Well, it's like setting the precedence on the front lines. Right. It's just communicating. Just proactive. No one knows how to communicate anymore. (laughs) And I think that's huge too, like what you're saying, where once you've created that vulnerability with them and you have that baseline level, that's when I think, like, especially when you're trying to not yell at them and not like reprimand them by any means, but maybe give them a little bit of that kickstart that, you know, that friendly, like, hey, like, you know, you're not, we aren't doing what we need to be doing, you know, like, let's kick it into gear. You have that ability to do that. Like, you've almost established that relationship. But if you, like, if you're just like, all right, yep, here's your plan, you know, and then two weeks later you hit them up and they're like, Hey, I haven't been doing very well. Like, you know, or you see their numbers and then you hit them up again. You're like, what the heck is going on? You know, you haven't done what we've said. And it's like, well, you know, you haven't even built like a rapport with them to be able to give them tough love. You know what I mean? Like to be able to say, you know, Hey, like let's kickstart this. Cause they don't maybe not respect you or maybe they're scared of you, you know, like they don't, you know, and it's like, maybe some coaches want that, like, unfortunately, but it's like, I don't know. I think there's a difference between, you know, being that authority and creating that relationship so that you can, you know, give a little tough love and, and, and not have it feel like they're being attacked. You know what I mean? Where they're like, why is he yelling at me? You know, or like, why is he you know, happy with what I'm doing? You know, I think that has been key for me, you know, where it's like, like with parents too, like where, you know, if you have one parent who like, maybe you just don't emotionally attach with, and it's like, if they're yelling at you, <laughs> your chances are you're probably not going to listen to what they have to say even if it's valid you know it's just right. it's kind of interesting with with that sort of thing in in, in my experience yeah. and and i think it's kind of like back what we were saying before is like having them take ownership of their own life and ask them how do you like to be approached in conflict how do you like totally. to ask about this because then when you do go to them or give them those little love nudges, you know, they asked for it in that way. So then they're not like, oh, Joe's doing this again, or, you know, it's like, yep. you're approaching them in the way that they need it and want it, which is great, you know, cause then they'll more so respond to that. I think also what's super cool is I think that's what makes, I'll put myself in this too, but what makes us and you, Joe, like a great coach in comparison to other coaches is just like, we're taking that time to try and understand people. It's not just like, Hey, here's your training plan or here's your nutrition plan or here's what you should work on or here's what you need to do. Um, I think that's the difference between uh, an okay coach or a good coach and a great or amazing and intentional coach, you know, is just really just stopping and pausing and stop being so Mm -hmm. prescriptive and just hear what your clients are truly like needing from you as that coaching Mm -hmm. person in their life investment. Yeah, how can you best invest in them? I it's no, I totally agree, and I think that's that's so interesting because you know, like you said, everyone is so unique. You know, you have a mom with three kids, you know, who's divorced and a single parent, and it's like versus you know someone like me, where you know a young, you know, middle twenties, like you're like you know you got more freedom and you got you know you got things going on, or like a college kid, right? Like or a high school kid it's there's so many different things that you have to take into consideration and yeah exactly like I mean even at the ground level like you know nutrition wise and workout wise we're just giving someone a cookie cutter plan it's like okay like how do you know that's gonna work but even at yeah. the like the more like the, even the more ground level even if you give them that plan it's like if you're not if, if you're not kind of at that point in which they they really do feel as though you know you're bought into them as much as you want them to buy into you I think that's that's really where that disconnect comes from. And I've had, cause I had that conversation so many times with clients of mine. Cause I would say like wow. 50 or 60% of my clients have probably worked with an online coach before I would say, um, or some sort of a, you know, a plan coach, that sort of thing. And I've, I've heard such negative, you know, responses with that. And it's like, it really is comes down to, it was like lack of connection. You know what I mean? And that is, 
I think that's, like you said, it's the biggest thing. People want that. They don't have that connection, you know, on any level. A lot of times it's, it's really sad. Like, you know, where you might be the only person who listens to them all day or gives them a time of day, you know? And it's like, wow, like that's, that, like you said, that is not a right. That is 110% something that's a privilege and something that is amazing. Like where it's like, Hey, this person's like needs you really, you know what I mean? And, and it's a blessing that you, you know, that you come, come across paths like that. I think, um, it's interesting. Where I don't know. I, I almost I, I talk about it a lot. Where like I almost empathize. I over empathize too much sometimes. Where I feel so much of my client's stress a lot of times that it's like ah, you know, like yeah, it's yeah. hard to separate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Sometimes. I think, yeah, I think there should be like coaching. depending on who they are. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for real, though, for real. You're like right? now. Where are the margaritas? I will disconnect today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. During my office hours, that is, right? <laughs> but no, I think you were about to say something, Clarice. Yeah, I think that online coaching, there's so many online coaches that claim to be great coaches. And oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's, it is hard to not um, sympathize rather than empathize. I think that's the right use, usage of those words. Um, where people go above and beyond to overly relate with their clients and then they take it all on and then it's super exhausting. Yeah. No, like your role as a coach is to care for your clients Mm -hmm. or your users or whatever it may be, but to to not carry them Mm -hmm. where it's like totally taking everything on and you're coming back to the empower. Yeah. Yeah. Coming back to empower where it's just, it's not a matter of you carrying them through. Like if you're empowering them in the best way, then you're caring for them and exactly how they need. Um, but you're empowering them to take action. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there Love should that. be some training on online coaching or whatever it may be. Cause I think there is, um, a really hard and hard and fast line between, mm-hmm. um, just, empathizing versus really like taking everything on and I think they're um it's a hard line to kind of walk over or to stay behind if that makes sense I feel like at the end of the day these people need to like everyone needs to make sure they're doing their research whenever they're provided any type of mental health service or physical health service Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day when you're dealing with the body, there are so many things and factors that you need that your coach needs to be knowledgeable about how your body, your specific body works. Like Clarice has told me stories of people that have been trained by others and how their body had like reverse effects and mm-hmm. just how terrible the results came mm-hmm. from. That. And also mental health. I've had yeah, I was gonna say relationship with food from that too. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It's like you, like you should not be advising anybody, you know, just yes. on paper doesn't mean oh. you're qualified. Um, yeah. So that kind of scares me. Like people need to, I just advise people to like do your research, you know, kind of don't just look for letters behind people or numbers, letters, sorry, letters behind people's names. Um, really look for that partnership interview, kind of like dating. Um, yeah. Talk about the hard things. How do you how are you going to help me? You know, because that way, you know, you've done your due diligence and finding the right fit for yourself in this life, because it's, it's, it can be hard, <laughs> Yeah, you know, to find I the just, right fit. I feel like a lot of, um, our coaches out there are just really there to just make their money, you right. know, and it's, yep. um, whether that looks like a cookie cutter plan or letting someone just jump into bodybuilding where it's like, they don't even know what macros are, or they don't even know um, what a healthy relationship with food looks like, you know? And it's like, all of these areas need to be addressed before even thinking about bodybuilding or thinking about um, whatever their goal is, you know? And that's what I think really should be focused on, whether that's with online coaching or coaching in general, as just like that interview process with the, that people should go through to find the best coach that fits for them, you know, and that's where if my client finds someone else that fits their um, training needs better than me, then I awesome. I, I want them to be able to make that step, not feel bad about it and really feel 
um, empowered and excited for that huge change due to the fact that this person is going to better help, help them in their health and wellness journey. You know, I never mm -hmm. want to be that coach where people are, are like, oh, I have like, she used to be my coach. And it's so weird because I like, it was so like weird leaving her training or whatever it may be, you know, like I want to empower my clients where it's like, I want you to succeed and I want to see whatever that looks like. So be it, you know, and if that's yeah. not me as your coach, then that's fine. You know, like I want you to do what's best for you. And at the end of the day, that's what like truly matters, you know? Um, but yeah, always coming back to that um, empowering because your reaction to really any like circumstance is so important. Um, and you can't always, take control of every single thing that happens day to day, but it's important how you react to those situations. And I think that says a lot about people's character and just who they are. I, I totally agree. And kind of two things there, like the first thing I think really, like you said, in terms of the online world, like people see it as such a, like a quick and easy fix to be able to do that, you know, like where it's like, Oh, you know, all I got to do is just, you know, put, click link in my bio, you know, and people are going to, by my coaching and it's like yeah that's 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 totally true but then you're gonna actually have to coach them you know and these are humans and people and it's like it's just wild and that's where like a lot of times with me I, I will have a, a phone consultation with someone before we even sign up because I'm like I want you to realize that I'm a human and I'm gonna actually talk to you you know and two I also want to know that it's gonna be a good fit for me too you know like I don't want to just take your money and then you know you have some total you know out of my, you know, experience or my realm sort of problem, you know, where someone, like you said, someone else could be a better, way better fit for you and actually help you achieve your goal that you want. Um, it's just like, I want you to just communicate that with me, you know, and just be open. I don't have any problem with you trying to, you know, be, be better and better yourself. But um, no, I think that's huge. And, and then what you're mentioning earlier, as far as um, empathy and, and really how you're asked or answering those sort of um maybe if someone's looking for sympathy, essentially, you know, or someone's like, Oh my gosh, you know, I just had a horrible day. Right. Or like my, my life's so, so, so miserable. Right. Instead of being like, I'm so sorry to hear that, you know, like, just like, well, why do you feel that way? You know, what is there something, is there anything you can do to, to change this? You know, or like, what do you think day to day wise, you know, things you're doing right now that maybe don't align with what you want, you know, like, I think that really changed the game for me because I used to be that same way where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like what's going on? You know, like, and then they just like drop all their problems on you. And it's like, well, maybe you need to know about those problems. But I think those kind of like motivational interviewing a little bit of like, you know, here's yeah. kind of what can help you. Um, maybe I can give you some questions that'll get you brainstorming a little bit. Um, Cause you probably know better than I do. You know, I don't want to sit here and say, give you all these answers that probably, you know, you're not going to use or benefit from, you know, like you're me telling you how it is, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> never goes over well. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. But, but yeah, That's so awesome. I, I was gonna say, I think really guys, this was a, uh, this is very, very productive. And I think, I think a lot of people are gonna, are gonna find benefits from this. And this is something that uh, I think we should have more conversations like this, do this again. Yeah. yeah. 100. Anytime. Yeah. It was great getting to know you too. Yeah. This is awesome. Exactly. No. On um, coaching and just everything that that entails, and how you kind of angle your coaching with your clients. So I think um, mm -hmm. keep doing what you're doing. I think you're really yeah. um, one of the few coaches in the area I know, at least, that really care about the people that they work with, and that's really cool. Well, I really appreciate that, and I I would totally say the same about you guys as far as just your overall message behind things, just who you are, and obviously you guys, you know, you got your head on straight in terms of just the 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 world we live in, the reality around us, you know, as far as just what it is and, and how that can, you know, affect people positively or negatively when you are coaching them and, and trying to better their mental and physical health. But um, no, I, I totally agree. We definitely, definitely need to do this again. Um, I, I would love to. Uh, and I want to, I want to help you guys out too. Where can everyone find you if people are wanting to, you know, find your content, social media wise, websites, what does that look like if they're trying to find you guys? Yeah. So, um, our whole business is really just on Instagram right now. So if you want to get into Perfect. contact with us or hear more about what we're about or kind of um, just see motivational posts that we'll post or more posts just about um, the mental and physical, you can look on Instagram and that'll be at sisters who coach. Okay. Um, and then we also have a Facebook where there's more like content related items that are being posted there, like good mental health blogs or um just 
not quick fix type blogs, but little things that are insightful that, you know, things that align with our thinking on a lot of stuff. So if you're wanting more content, I would say hit up Facebook, Sisters Who Coach. But if you're kind of just wanting little that stuff here and fits, there yeah. and want to get in touch with us, I would say that's definitely more Instagram, Sisters Who Coach. Yeah, so. we have our um, contact information on there or DM us and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, if you guys are interested, you want to talk more with them, you want to learn a little bit more about their business or how they can maybe help you, um, feel free to give them a follow and, and shoot them a message. They definitely will be, will be in touch with you. And I think, like I said, I really appreciate you guys coming on because I think this is something that I learned a lot from, I benefited from, and I definitely know my clients and friends, family, anyone listening to this is going to really really benefit I think and people really I think I think the, the main people that need to hear this a lot of times is, is going to be coaches uh, themselves or yeah. potential coaches yes. I think coaches it would be huge it's going to make uh it's going to change the game hopefully because I think this is huge like you need with all the you know mental health issues that we are facing and the numbers that we that we have in, in America and really around the world I think you know the correlation needs to be there and especially with you know the obesity rates I think I just read it was like by 2030, it's supposed to be one in every two people are going to be obese, not just overweight, which is like mind blowing to me and really scary. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, both of those things, you know, they're obviously, they're not in a good spot. And uh, the correlation is definitely there. So once yes. again, um, thank you guys a ton. I don't know if you guys have yeah, any thank you. words at all. Do you want to want to close out at all? Oh. Any parting words is go drink your margaritas because yeah. the best ideas happen over that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You can't you can reiterate that enough. <laughs> you, can, you can definitely, you can definitely just relax and uh, and enjoy <laughs> and enjoy a margarita through this podcast. I think that would be a great. Exactly, that would be a great <laughs> start. Yeah. I was gonna say, hopefully they did when we were mentioning it earlier. They were right. their own while they're listening, or you know, they gotta gotta right. balance it out. Gotta relax. <laughs> exactly. Parting words: always do a yoga session. Yes, I would say like that's why yeah. I do it. It's it's my meditation and then yeah, you yes. know that physical mobility all in one. It's only it's yeah. only benefit. Actually, I'm trying to get my mom and my parents to get into Love it more too because I think awesome. I think yoga is a game changer for for many. But yes. well, um, whether but yeah. you decide to put this on the podcast or not, I do have to share my Let's brother. I'm um, keeping it in. Keeping it <laughs> in. <laughs> I remember. I used to live in South Carolina, right? And okay. there was this amazing hot yoga <laughs> studio there. It's okay. called Southern Arm, but it was just phenomenal. <laughs> um, they would have like guest nights. So my brother okay. came for one of the guest nights. You pay five bucks. You bring your towel, your, you know, your beach towel because you're sweating so much. And your water bottle. Well, my brother comes in. We get all set up. We're about five minutes into the class. It's like fun. It's like a vinyasa flow pretty quick fun um room is hitting like a hundred degrees <laughs> i'm sweating so thinking about this sweating. you know it's horrible um uh, but great at the same time at one at that point he's like hey janelle i left my water bottle in the car i gotta go get it dude never came back to class oh my gosh <laughs> oh my gosh no that's i think that's totally yeah. like does he okay? I don't you don't have to go in in depth, but yeah, yeah. you probably have some stuff you needed to deal with during that point in time. Right, right. It was probably yeah. more of a mental thing at that point. Like things mind to, over body. Yeah. Things to deal things to deal with and just really not ever wanting to step foot in. He was probably yeah. feeling like super yeah. vulnerable and like yep. dirty pose or whatever it is. No, totally. <laughs> I actually <laughs> it's it's <laughs> I've brought uh, one of my clients. Um, this is downward dog. <laughs> and this is and this is deep into the podcast. So hopefully he'll only know who he is if he's if he listens to this. All but the way through. I took, yeah, I took him. I took one of my one of my clients to a, a yoga class, and I didn't really tell him anything about it. It's like a very the class we went to was like very. It's like more restorative, kind of like very meditation, oh, yeah. like very yeah. in touch with yourself. And he's going through a lot at the time, and we go through the whole class and. Um, with his own personal life that is and so we go through the class and he, I look over at him he's like this big like burly guy and he's like he's literally tearing up at the end of the class oh my God. And, yeah and so the instructor she's very very nice she's like how like how did it go she knew it was his first time and he's like I, like I I don't know like I just had all these emotions like kind of come over me and like and, and, and she was like no that's very normal like she's like I'm very like you should be very proud of yourself for embracing it and admitting it, you know, and you're not like, Oh no, it's just hot. Like, but well, she literally said it was funny. She's like, there's a lot of people who I've actually had get up in the middle of class and leave 
because of whatever, you know, who knows what's going on, but I'm like, that's crazy. That really, I guess it makes sense though. When you're never, you're never stopping and all of a sudden you do, and someone's talking to you, it's interesting where that, that vulnerability comes out for sure. But yeah, yeah. we'll have to do a, a group wow. yoga session for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could be next time and we'll talk about yeah. all of our yoga thoughts. After our <laughs> Perfect. Talk. Perfect. Before we get into another, another uh, part of the podcast, right? Yeah. Right. Part two. Awesome. Part two. <laughs> awesome. Thanks well, so I, much for having us, Joe. Yes. Thank you guys for, for hopping on. And like I said, it was really great. Yeah. And honestly, like I said, we'll, we'll have to do this again. Yes. Awesome. Totally. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so awesome. much. And thank you everyone. If you're still listening, especially, um, I really appreciate yeah. it, and especially all the way through. Um, so thank you guys. And if there's anything you would like us to cover on the next one, please drop below in the comments or shoot us either one of us a message and we definitely will, uh, we'll get on it. So other than that, thank you guys for listening and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.